So what's going on guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Today we have another great guest on. He is the owner of the Jordan Peterson Archive, Louis Convery. How are we doing, man? Not too bad. Cheers, Ali, for having us on. It's That's all right, man. Up. Yeah, it's good to finally have you on. We've tried to get this sorted, haven't we, for the past month. You've had to sort out a mic. I couldn't do it yeah. last week. and We finally got it penciled in, which is amazing. So for the audience that may not know who you are, and to give a bit more of an in-depth overview, do you just want to explain who Louis Convery is? Right, so I was afraid you would ask this question. Right? <laughs> um, see, I'm not really anybody special. I'm just the person behind the Jordan Peterson Archive, which is probably where most people know me from. Um, I'm just a regular guy, you know what I mean? I've been on a journey, journey in the past um, 14 to 16 months in regards to taking my mental and um, sort of physical like experience more serious. Um, so I started the Jordan Peterson Archive um, in 2018, um, started working out properly in 2019, and now I'm just trying to merge the two. Um, I'm not trying to really build an audience on Instagram, but just share my experience, be transparent, be truthful, um, and we'll probably delve into some of the sort of bad habits I've had and sort of still delve into a little bit today. But um, I'm just trying to improve, trying to get a little bit more, um, build up more of a mental fortitude and trying to hit 80 kilograms as well so <laughs> is that the goal is it physique wise it was um i've had a bit of a chat with another personal trainer called seb beeson on instagram and we jumped on a call and he was like you should stop focusing on the number so much and he was like when i look at you on instagram i would probably guess you're at 85 kilogram and i was like right so it, it's more of a so from the, obviously a outside perspective um i want to look good to other people you know um it's like i used to be quite slim so my pals will look at this um oh he's been improved you know what i mean and then people chat with you in a, a different way obviously you, you, the attention you get from women's different as well for sure. but also for me it's um it's more about like hitting 80 kilogram feeling comfortable in my body so i'm gonna try and focus more on um now just sort of being technical with my workouts and not focus on the weight too much but that was the goal when I first started and I'm, I'm sitting at around 70 now so I've got a way to go <laughs> nice man I think it, you're right it's, it's good to have that personal number as a goal but also like it's good to not get tied up to the scales and like numbers mm. and stuff because you could yeah, look you could look 78 kilos and be really happy with yourself and then you feel like oh god I've set that number in my head I need to I yeah. need to reach it and it's kind of like the number doesn't matter at all right it's just like a, a destination what matters is like you go through that mm. journey and then you, you're happy along the way kind of thing well, the thing is, you hit 80 kilogram, and then you're like, right, I want to be 85, then 90. <laughs> well, that's the problem, is it? Like, yeah. I was like that when I first started training as well. And I got to the point yeah. where I was like, if I looked like I am now, and I sort of had that goal back when I was younger, I'd, be, I'd have been happy. But like oh, now, sure. now I've reached the goal, I'm at, I'm <laughs> like, damn, man, I still don't look good. <laughs> you know what I mean, yeah. it's like, it's, it's, it's just one like of those continuous, things. isn't it? Yeah. Like, it's the same with mental and like the, the sort of mental aspect as well. You always, you never know, you never. You say you, you reach this point with dealing with enough shit or responsibility and then you sort of um, add a little bit more weight as you would in the gym mentally and physically. It's the same sort of thing. So uh, there's always like the next goal or the next thing after you've achieved it. And uh, it's one of those things that's continuous. So, And I think that's that's life as well. One of the, the best books I've read was, um, I think you've read it as well, The Way of the Superior Man by David Dieda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's a paragraph in there, I can't remember it all, but he basically just says that it never mm -hmm. ends. And like the whole aim of life is to wrestle and, and play with like the, the present moment as if it was, mm -hmm. you know, the only thing there. And it's true, right? All you have is the present moment. And, you know, there's no end goal. There's no finish line. There yeah. are goals that you reach, but you have to enjoy the fact that, you're always going to be working towards something and that's great because you can mm. kind of have meaning then in the process yeah i think as a man as well it's more important to always be working on something for me um so when i was younger i always said that i wanted free time and last year i was making like um i was able to go to the gym so much because i was doing quite well with some online stuff i was doing so i wasn't working um so i had all the free time in the world so I was filling it in with um, when I wasn't at the gym, I, I had a lot more money to go out and spend with my friends. Um, and obviously back then I was sort of um, quite relaxed with uh, sort of, what would I say, like indulging in alcohol, drugs. Yeah. So um, while I was obviously doing all of that, I realized I had all of this free time. But what I realized was that I want to be working on something and I want to be around like-minded people. Um, 
So I always like problem solving, you know what I mean? Yeah, for um, sure. So the free time thing now for me has changed. Um, what it is, is more of a, like you said, continuous and um, self-improvement thing, physical and mental. But um, it is important to sh- just to, as a man, I think, to be always working on something and just for anyone in general, to be honest. But Yeah, yeah. definitely. I think everyone should have their purpose and especially as a guy, you kind mm. of, and, and it's the way that kind of the gender roles are. And, you know, the gender roles, like nowadays, especially with the political correctness around people say, <laughs> right, like men and women are equal, but they're not. And that's not to say that one's better than the other. It's to say both value different things and both have yeah. different kind of, drives biologically to do stuff and of course there's outliers right there are women that can be very masculine and there are men that can be more feminine but there is like a a general direction to to where things are and i think especially if you are a stereotypical man and you're driven through that kind of masculine drive you always want to have something to focus on and obviously for you that is the jordan peterson archive which is a big thing that you focused on so what what how did you initially set that up and, and what was the reason for it um so i think i set it up in 2018 and back then i was like working a shitty job i didn't want to work in um i was hanging around with the wrong people um i was just more focused on sort of the uh what's it the pleasurable side of life but one that was destructive you know what <laughs> yeah I mean? yeah um so i decided i just wanted to change and it's not like i've totally been perfect along that path for the past two years but it's a lot better now as you refocus but um Back then, I was just on a shitty path. I, I've always been a fan of Joe Rogan. So I've seen Jordan Peterson on that. And I was like, right, I like this guy. And there was one other page back then, Lobster Ascending. I'm not sure if you heard of it. Did you? No, I haven't, no. He created all of the graphs. And I feel bad saying this, but I kind of pinched them. Uh, you know the visual posts? Okay, right, yeah. But um, there wasn't sort of like a diverse sort of um, content sort of strategy that that guy had. And it, he was he was sort of had a gap between his posting, um. So I decided to create Jordan Peterson archive. Um, added video, the quotes, and took the visual posts, um. And that's pretty much how it started back, back in 2018. I think it was June, so we're coming up to almost two years. Um, and obviously Jordan's had a bit of a hiatus at the minute. He's been a bit quiet, but I've tried to just keep the content coming, obviously, because he's got a lot of content. So, um, that's pretty much how it started. Um. And I'm just looking for it to grow, obviously, now. He, he helped it grow. He, he shared a post on his Facebook, the Slay the Dragon poster. Um, So that was good. That helped it uh, grow nice. a little bit. So it's it's obvious that he's recognized the page, which is good. I think it's one of the most sensible communities, non-political at all. I try to stick to the self-development, which is obviously the aspect for me. Um, So that's just how it is. And it's I'm just about to hit 50,000. I think I'm at 48,000 at the minute. So... But I have to be careful because the 48,000 followers are for him and not me. So <laughs> Yeah, and I was going to say, it, it's grown quite a lot. And I obviously yeah. came across the page itself and I really liked it because it is non-political and it is just raw Jordan Peterson rules yeah. of life, basically. Yeah. And, and I love that because I, I love what he's about and that whole personal responsibility. Um, yeah. But I also like the fact that you do merge a little bit of your own thoughts into it because there is also a person behind the page. But then you yeah. do have to be careful that you don't kind of take that over as the Louis yeah. Comrie thing, especially with 50,000, which I think you're doing very well. Mm. Uh, which is awesome and you've got some pretty big people following that page as well there's some big fitness guys following the page yeah. and, and it's grown really well so um with essentially jordan peterson what was it about his work that you really liked uh well good question i think it's it's like so when i left school 2013 i found another mentor online elliot hulse you might hear elliot hulse yeah i used to follow his youtube videos yeah um so he's took a bit of a weird turn at the minute he's very patriotic and he's got these weird things but obviously i'd I'd only connect with the ideas that um are relevant to me so i don't obviously i still listen to him but so with jordan peterson um i've seen that like a connection of um sort of the personal responsibility back then when i was watching elliot hulse i realized that he was pushing a, a lot more of a clear message back in 2013 elliot hulse was um i was i wanted to join the marines back then so um, I was trying to like figure out just like my personal philosophies and principles. Um, and so obviously I was watching Elliot Hulse and Jordan Peterson was sort of merging. He was like the new, like the second mentor I had um, from 2013 when I um, found him in 2018. So um, it was sort of like 
one main philosophy that I found from Elliot Hulse was that I'm in charge of my life. Um, everything's down to me. And so Jordan Peterson just sort of brought a refreshed and renewed sort of message along with that. Um, and that's probably the main point. Um, the psychological aspect as well, I've always been interested in that. It's very practical, Jordan Peterson's work. Um, and obviously I don't just listen to Jordan Peterson, but he, I find that his ideas, and he puts them down into such basic terms that you can take his work as a base level and then um, connect it to someone like James Clear or Dale Carnegie, um, you know, like all of these different yeah, uh, yeah. people. So that's the main thing. I think Jordan Peterson's the easiest to follow. Um, and so my dad's probably going to listen to this, but let's not take it the wrong way, dad, right? So um, <laughs> I would say that. So my mom and dad split up. Okay. Um, and looking at the difference between some of my friends who've grown up with a father figure, whether it's their actual dad or not, is it's like night and day. Um, so I have a friend at the minute who has, he's just found out he's having twins. Um, he has a really nice car. He still lives with his parents. His mom was um, in the, uh, sorry, his dad was in the army. His mom was a school teacher, very disciplined, like really reliable person. I would say that um, the problem that he has is slight freedom, you know, to choose what he wants to do. He went into a career that his dad chose. Um, and so um, that's sort of the, like the, the difference between someone like him and me. Um, I sort of had more freedom and stuff. So, um, back to the main point anyway, the Jordan Peterson thing. Um, that's just sort of that responsibility. And um, he was a, a sort of like a, a, a mentor, like sort of like a father figure, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's um, that's kind of the reason why. I think that we should always take influence from different people, but um, he was a heavy one for me. And yeah, that's pretty much uh, why he was a big influence for me and why I was attracted to his work. So, yeah. yeah, nice, man. I think you touched on a good point there. And I see it online as well. People say Jordan Peterson is the father figure people uh, ever yeah. had, right? Kind of thing. Uh, and I'm kind of in the same position as well. I kind of had a lot of freedom in the sense of, and I never really had like you know, not, not to say anything bad about my dad, but never really those strong principles instilled in me and those strong values. Mm. I think it's the same for most guys, right? It's not that their dad yeah. doesn't love them or, or doesn't want to do the right thing, but sometimes people don't have the blueprint or the right ways to, to maybe teach you the things that you need you need to learn. Um, mm. And that's no disrespect to them. Everybody goes through a different, a different journey. So um, it's yeah. good to have people like Jordan that are there that have really got the knowledge and they break down that meta message of... of values responsibility and looking after yourself and that's what i really found mm. interesting about him is, is like the rules for life essentially the the blueprint yeah, to, yeah. to live in you know in the right way and living truthfully which yeah. i think is, is great well the thing is uh, like even so obviously i can't speak i don't really know too much about the past but um about like what it was like for men in 1950s 60s i know it was definitely different but like i know that um, mine and your dad would have had like maybe they weren't led or had the blueprint as well. So it's not their fault, really. It's not like we're blaming them or passing on the blame or um, trying to, you know what I mean, like sort of make excuses. But um, I guess it, it's just like you have to sort of find out what it is that you want to live by, define yourself um, and just stick by those principles because everybody's different. Um, even though your dad might have influenced you or not influenced you, you have to figure things out for yourself. So um it's one of those things you have to that's what i'm trying to do now um in the past 2019 I, I had this idea of where i wanted to be and what i wanted to look like how i wanted to come across on social media and now i'm sort of changing it so as you can see i'm growing trying to grow a beard yeah i saw that man <laughs> i love that and, um, well like, i can't i can't do that because i got poverty asian genetics so i can't <laughs> grow a beard man <laughs> yeah no how you ever tried you know uh, yeah, I do, man. But I just look like I got bum fluff, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, look like one of those seventeen-year-old kids that's like trying to buy alcohol without an ID. So he tries yeah. to grow a little beard. Um, it just doesn't work yeah. for me, man. <laughs> this is this is the first time I've tried, and I've got a goatee going on. It's slowly coming through. Yeah, you can see feet. it coming through, man. That's it's yeah. half decent, man. Yeah. But um, so like, I'm trying to go for this image now. I, I love trucks. I love trucks. I don't right. know why. I okay. don't drive, but when I do, I'm, I'm going to get a truck. <laughs> so I want a truck. I want to just turn up to the gym, right? I want to be bearded. So for anyone that doesn't know, I've also shaved my head. Nice. So it looks good, but I like to wear a cap. I feel like it fits, you know, a good, good shaped head. But um, I'm going for that, like, more masculine look, you know what I mean? Sure. And that's one thing I've noticed. Um, 
So I think I was around 60 kilograms, I don't know what it is, 140 pounds when I first started. Now I'm 5 foot 11, that's slim. That's yeah, slim, that's quite right? quite light, right? Yeah. So I was like, fucking hell. And obviously, as you grow up and you're skinny, uh, your friends banter you, you know, you ha- and you, the view that you, or your chances with women is severely, like, cut. So I noticed that when I was working out and um, so my body would, so that the body image that I had created would start to, like, sort of match my intellectual capacity. So I'm not trying to say that I'm, like, you know, some intellectual or whatever, but... I can figure out ideas and speak and write them. I can write them better, but I'm learning to speak them through better. So um, there's like a more of a connection now with um, the type of body I've got um, in the intellectual, like sort of the way I speak. Uh, that's changed. Um, so that's another little transformation I've noticed um, that people would take things I say more seriously. Um, I've also learned to uh, use anger in a way, not anger, but like um, be more assertive, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, for sure. Because that's something that I've always struggled with, um, getting points across within a group and stuff. But um, I've noticed a shift within the way just people interact um, with women, uh, with men, obviously, like the way you chat with them and stuff. So um, it's another little process that I went through, but now I'm sort of changing. Um, I want to just try and, instead of coming across that way, I want to try and live them more because. I've realized that um, you can bullshit yourself on social media and chat um, and say you're going to do this and, you know, you, you, you did this or you, you plan on doing that or you were this way in the past. But um, actions speak louder than words 100%. So if you're ever struggling about sort of, um, you know, what you should be doing or like who you actually are, just look at your actions instead of what you're telling yourself because um, they have a lot more credibility behind them. So I'm trying to figure out that um become more responsible and um try and act that way instead of just talking about it you know what i mean yeah for sure man i love that point i think it's very easy to say to yourself right i'm gonna have all these grand plans and i'm gonna do these amazing things and i used to be kind of that guy personally as well i used to say i'm gonna do this Mm -hmm. i let everybody know and it's kind of like stroking your ego isn't it before you've even done anything Mm -hmm. and a much better thing that i feel that i do now is just take the action and then hopefully the results and my actions have, have paid dividends and I, I can then you know i don't have to speak about it it shows and mm. kind of live in your your reality is much better than, than dreaming it yeah yeah 100 percent um it's one of those things like so i've noticed this um in the past i was like when you put an idea out there right and then you say you're going to do it um it generally never happens because it's like a sense of false of achievement so you, in your head, you're like, I'm going to do this. And you've painted the picture for yourself. And then when it comes to it, you either fall short. So you've set your expe- expectation far too high. And then now you've you've thought, right, I've shared this in the public. So people are going to have this opinion about it. And that, that just crushes people to never try again. Um, so you should just be quiet. Um, save yourself some embarrassment if you don't even attempt it. And you do feel there will be embarrassment but you shouldn't care about what anyone else is thinking you know what i mean just keep everything to yourself have a crack um and when if you are successful then decide to share it or you know if you fail share what the lessons you've learned so definitely keeping things to yourself instead of putting them grand plans out there like you said i think it psychologically has a different like effect on the way you actually act out the plan as well so it's interesting um i'm trying to be more quiet with things and instead of just you know with all these plans just keeping them quiet and uh actually putting action behind them like you said so yeah definitely it's such a good point and with social media especially you can get that instant gratification straight away when you put out a plan and you get yeah, everybody yeah. commenting and going man yeah. that's amazing can't wait to see you achieve this and do this and then you sit there and you smile and it gives you that sense of motivation for a little bit but yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of a false god really because that's not really why you should be doing it you shouldn't be doing it to get the validation from other people um, no. I've, I've actually got a, a load of notes in my actually my wallpaper on my phone so i'm just going to get it up because i think this is relevant i've got like daily reminders on my phone so mm-hmm. exercise for 30 minutes get eight hours sleep all of these self-care stuff and then one of them says um be true to yourself don't try to impress others and i think mm-hmm. that it seems so simple and very cliche but it's so true yeah. because you can do stuff like that like set these goals or these aspirations to try and please other people but it's the it's, it's the wrong way to go you need to do things for yourself and mm. make it personal and you don't need to shout about it because actually just by 
living your own value you're happy about doing it mm -hmm. yeah well that's like the social media thing as well at the minute it's sort of like it's like um there's a quote by ray dalio it's ray dalio it's not a quote it's more like a like a paragraph or a principle but he says i'm um, essentially um fail well he's like everybody's sharing their successes because them are showing you what they're succeeding at but he's he's like um you should be failing and recovering and strategizing um, instead of like sort of pushing your successes. Because obviously on social media, we've got that sort of like outwards push for everything. Um, and you said obviously before that the motivation for like sort of um, pushing the idea from um, how others would perceive you. I think that it's kind of like on a percentage scale, I'm not sure how it would fall, but if you've got a goal, like for me personally, um, I wanted to go to the gym to look good for other people. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But the majority of the percentage, I would say, let's say 40%, I wanted to look good and get attention, right? Who doesn't want to have attention? Of course. But then the 60% is along the... Actually, I'm going to reiterate, right? So I would probably say, let's be realistic. 60% was to come across um, and have more attention from other people when I first begun. And then 40% was probably for me. And then I think that flips because along the way you're like right i look good okay i can improve so i'm getting all this attention but then you sort of realize the aspect of working out every day lifting heavy like the mental fortitude you have to um conjure up to sort of get out the last rep or do an ab workout after you know doing a up hour um, lower body workout it's sort of like there's more um it switches as in like you get more from it personally and um, the longer you do it um, and then the, the percentage sort of switches so right now for me it's probably like 70 percent i'm working out and you know doing all this um, self-development stuff for me and not just to come across as some um, influencer or guru or just to look good so i think it's important when you first begin you should definitely have external um, motivations but try and um you'll you'll realize when you go through the process that it sort of changes and switches so yeah, that's a, really, that at least. that's a really good point because I was listening to David Goggins' audiobook and he basically said that he obviously he was bullied at school, he had a really bad upbringing and he basically wanted to do stuff to prove everybody wrong to start out yeah. with, right? So his motivation, his driver was to prove his dad wrong that abused him, to prove the kids yeah. at school that were racist to him wrong. And obviously his motivation was massively extrinsic, but he realised that as he <laughs> transformed through this process that as he got more proficient and i think it is about building that positive momentum once you prove other people wrong you can kind mm -hmm. of prove yourself right if that makes sense so then yeah. later on you become more intrinsically motivated and that's the same with me in the gym man i wanted to look good initially so i could be more attracted mm -hmm. to women so i could <laughs> prove to the guys around me that i was strong now yeah. I, now i don't need to prove that to anyone man i know that if i wasn't in shape I wouldn't care what a girl think. I would care more about what I thought about myself. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's what I, I, I think is important. And it's definitely that journey. So I think mm. that's that's amazing. What I wanted to talk about is kind of go back to the start there. You spoke about you kind of delved into some bad habits when you were younger. And mm -hmm. that kind of springboarded you to do the Jordan Peterson um, studying and, and launch the, the Instagram page. So what kind of were these habits that you were were behaving <laughs> when, you uh... were, when you were younger? <laughs> Just so through school, I had never the only drug I had ever like sort of experienced was marijuana. You know, weed. yeah, sure. So I had tried it once, didn't like it. It doesn't work for me. I know people who can you know have a joint. They love it. Yeah. The 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 mind's like a mind map. They're like, right, I'm gonna. What happens if I attack this from this way and stuff? And I wish I could work like that. But yeah, I can't. I <laughs> <laughs> so I stay away from that. But one of the one of the main ones really was um, alcohol and cocaine to, yeah. uh, combined. Uh, in that, so when I left school, I didn't I had no contact with it. You know, you see it on telly and stuff. And um, I was actually in Las Vegas. I was seventeen and I was working for a company. Um, and I went over there with my friend. And um, it was a an affiliate marketing company. So we went over there. And that's the first time that um, I ever seen it sort of in front of us. Um, or one of the guys I was with. Um, and then from there, you realize that a lot, it's started to crop up a lot more. Um, so you get involved in it a little bit more. And um, so essentially it was just partying. Um, and it would last like weekends, 
you know what I mean, the whole weekend. And that's pr- primarily why I was, I had no, I had no um sort of knowledge about like, I wasn't training, I didn't have any nutritional knowledge. So I was going out, doing cooking, dr- um, alcohol, coming back and then eating like fucking breaded chicken breasts and chips and beans from the tea, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. it was, it was just like a horrible mix really. Um, And that was the sort of track I was on. I would say, like for a few years, it wasn't. When I look back, I was like, when I look back now, it's kind of crazy, you know, um, how much time we've wasted. And money. So, I money as well. <laughs> it's one of those things, isn't it? I think it's but, a habit that a lot of people, especially in their early teens, get get or late mm. teens, sorry, get involved in an early 20s. It's one of those, it's kind of like, it's bad to say, but it's kind of like a rite of passage for a lot of people. And, you know, it's, it's so kind of glorified nowadays as well. Like, especially yeah. when we live in Bristol, it's like the cocaine capital or something it got called. So there's, mm. a, there's a lot of it around where I, where I am. And um, mentally, it just would fuck you up. Like, can you sort of speak about kind of the, the mental side of how you felt when, when that was going on? Kind of the, the post come down? Uh, yeah. Um, well, that's the thing the come down, isn't it? Because obviously, I mean, let's be realistic. So drugs are addictive for a reason because they make you feel good. Um, and obviously you've been to a beef and, you know, it's rife over there. And yeah. You yeah. probably did, you know, various drugs yourself and it's not a bad thing really. I would, I wouldn't, I would never take it back, but I would definitely, um, take back the volume in which I did it and the frequency. But I think everyone should experience it at some point. Um, so the mental aspect, really, um, I would just, it's, you kind of, like, obviously post, like, when you, when you end in the weekend, it's just, like, a horrible state, you know, obviously, you, your body is, like, just fucked up chemically, um, but prolonged uses, it's sort of, I've never really had, like, any sort of problems with mental health that's the problem so i can't i can't really speak about it i've never i would never say i've ever been depressed or anything um i would never first of all if i was going to say i was depressed i would label myself depressed based on how i felt i wouldn't let anybody else do it that's a point we can probably talk about after um by anybody else i mean family or doctors or what have you um but apart from that obviously they make you feel shitty um your workflow and routine is just going to be fucked up you're hanging around other people who are doing the same thing um, so environment's a big part of it as well. Um, but I would say that it just, it's not a gradual thing. Uh, sorry, it's not an immediate effect that you'll have and um, that you'll notice. It's sort of a gradual thing. It's, um, you know, you do it every weekend for a month and then that's going to be, you're going to do that every year. So that's quite a substantial amount just in that year. But then obviously you do it the next year. Um, it's just going to creep up on you. Um, I, I don't really I can't really speak about like anxiety and stuff I've never really experienced anything to do with that or um, but I would just obviously it affects you physically but the mental aspect as well is just not going to be a good result over prolonged periods it's just going to be gradual and it's kind of like weight you know and um, people who eat shitty it happens over a course of a few years before they realize that they're obese and that's the same with mental health I would say um, you can it and once you're at that point it's a gradual sort of improvement again so it's a slippery road for sure that's a fact yeah 100 percent. and i think you made a good point there like linking it with a parallel of kind of getting fat and obesity because a lot of people like to be in denial until it's too late if that makes yeah. sense and by the time mm. it's actually going to really fuck you up that's when you go and slap yourself in the face and go oh shit something's just happened mm. i think this mm. is one of the biggest problems we have as humans is we have to wait for something really bad or nearly catastrophic to happen in our life for us yeah. to then take change when really mm. like most of us know we shouldn't be eating too much we know we shouldn't be mm. taking drugs we know the yeah. facts of life but reality is again the best lesson for most people right we we know in theory what we should be doing but we're driven by emotions and it, it, we have to wait until that very negative emotion that we feel before mm we stop that habit um yeah. and that's why i think it, it can be a bad thing and for yourself now is is that something you completely stay away from is that is that kind of a rule that you have or how are you um, how are you so managing that in lockdown i think um i've delved cooking twice okay yeah um alcohol not so much but um this is primarily so the reason primarily and i, I don't mean this to to 
sort of uh, run away from the responsibility of it because it was my fault and decision to do it, but um, environment again sure. was a factor. Um, so that's if, if if I had any ex ex um sort of uh, advice for anybody is to just fucking sort the people out around you because there's an idea that James Clear talks about and he's like um the people so it's it's not that um successful people for example or people who don't do drugs it's not that they've got extreme willpower it's that they don't put themselves in that position to begin with so um the question would be um who do you think what would the question be so it would be obviously um who has more willpower the person um who says no to things a lot more or um the person who obviously doesn't put themselves in that position anyway. It's probably the guy who doesn't put themselves in that position because they, they don't... Um, people say it's like a muscle, but you're going to be influenced by friends, emotions, like you said earlier. So there's too much going on in a, in a one, at one specific time where there might, there might be alcohol or drugs for you to kind of fight it off. And you might do it like two times out of ten, but it's better to just stay away from that environment anyway. Um, so for me, I did it, did it maybe twice. Um, I would say it's important to notice that alcohol acts as sort of a gateway drug as well. Yeah. Um, and it's even more debilitating alcohol over the long term. Um, and the reason it's more debil- um, debilitating is because it's it's like um, like we mentioned before with food, you don't you don't notice the effects straight away. It's sort of prolonged, isn't it? It's gradual, and, and then you fucking then you fucked up like by in many ways by alcohol. So. Um, for me, how do I manage it? Just to make sure that nobody around us. I'm um, trying to manage the people around us first of all, and um, generally nowadays that's by having very little people around us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would I would say that's a big part. That's how I manage it. Um, I haven't been exercising too much, but just what I've realised is there's a feeling that comes before you know you're going to do it, and it's like heightened activity in the body. That's how I feel because I feel like sort of an excitement but like shaky it's kind of like and it sounds so weird right i feel like a right fiend right now <laughs> but and um, that's what happens you have like an actual emotional or like like a nervous response when you're going to do it and you just have to distract yourself go out for a run or um generally what happens is when people know they're going to do it they, they'll do it um almost 15 or 20 or 30 minutes um when they have this feeling but just wait it out generally if you like it's like when you, people say when you're angry, if you're going to send an angry email, right, wait till the next day. Well, I would say wait a couple of hours or a day, uh, sorry, an hour or a couple of hours. Um, in this feeling of like wanting to drink or, um, you know, take, it just generally flows off. Um, so that's another way I've been doing it, just like sort of um, delaying the actual decision to have a drink or you know, have cocaine or whatever. Um, I think that's probably one of the three main ways, just environment, exercise, and sort of just ma- realizing when I feel like having a drink or, you know, something else is just um, delaying that response. So, Yeah, I love that, man. I think you touched on a good point there. It's about not acting on impulse. And, you know, I get yeah. it as well where, you know, it hits Friday and I'm like, damn, man, I just want to go out with my <laughs> mates. And I'm one of these yeah. people, I'm very obsessive as well. So when it comes to general work or whenever it comes to partying, like I just go from zero to 100. And it's because you act on that energy and that impulse that you have. And yeah. I can go like out on a Friday and I could do 10 drinks within the space of a few hours. Like seriously, just mm. zero to 100. And i'm actually better when i abstain so i have periods where i don't drink and i i go sober for a little bit and that actually helps me out man because i don't go crazy um and i'm still trying to master this thing called moderation and for me i find it very very difficult i have a very obsessive way about myself and i think the whole idea around this whole habit you know bad decisions is about understanding yourself because we're all going to have different triggers that cause us to behave in a certain way um and i especially find in lockdown i'm very a lot more anxious and I'm a lot more like het up from sitting at home all day. And that makes me want to go out on Friday and buy a, a, a 12 crate of beers. Right. I know that that's the case, but yeah. I have to say to myself, right, how am I going to feel tomorrow? And kind of like remind yourself of those horrible feelings that you feel when you do that reckless yeah. behavior, because there are yeah. some, sometimes like, don't get me wrong. I think there is time where you need that hedonism and you can't live like a robot and you need to 
be able yeah. to go out with your mates especially if you're celebrating something great right like your mates just got married or you know, oh, yeah, you, you know these, these big things but there's a lot of nights which you can literally say why the fuck did i do that why did i spend <laughs> that money why did i go out it's like it's mm. not worth it sometimes and like you said once you create an environment which allows you to stay away from that it's much easier to say no and those mm. destructive behaviors then don't happen yeah it's it's another thing as well it's like responsibilities it's like are oh, you prioritizing your time and your money um so in 2014 or 15 i took out a loan to try and start an online clothing business um and i well actually it would have been 2015 um, and I had five years to pay off and only this year I'm starting to actually pay off. So I have to pay, I've I have, I got a loan of £3,000 um, because of such a shitty life that I was leading. I just didn't have any responsibility in paying it, right? Which is obviously um, can destroy like a sort of um, options going forward. But now um, I've realized the mistakes and um, I think I have a few months to pay like pretty much around 75% of that balance off, which requires a lot of strict planning, budgeting, um, routine, uh, sorry, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I can't think of the word. <laughs> Just strict planning, you know, like sort of sure. being efficient with your money. Um, so that's what, that's like another thing is sort of, it's like a priority of things that it's like on a scale, isn't it? Um, for me now, if I do drugs or alcohol, I'm out of it for two days, but also it's like, it conflicts with my goal of hitting 80 kilograms because I'm not going to eat. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of them things you need to just be, you need to just, I'm trying not to bullshit myself as much now, you know what that's I mean? That's so true. So, yeah. It's Definitely. just um, priorities. Yeah. That's it, man. And I even find that as well. Like if I go out drinking and stuff like that, I'll re wreck two days and I'm like, I've actually moved further away from where I want to, like, why have I moved further away? Like, don't bullshit yourself. Like, you've pushed yourself further away. I've lost two days of, of being, mm. uh, you know, feeling healthy and happy, doing the things that I really enjoy. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's worth it, but most of the time it's actually not. So um, yeah. I, think, I think you touched on some really good points there. And I, I think for people as well that, that may be listening, they may have experienced personal use of, of, of drugs and, and alcohol and, and how that, you know, can, can be really destructive to you and actually set you back but hopefully there yeah. louis given you some actually from personal experience and i respect yeah. you for actually being transparent about that because most yeah. people won't talk about that man so i'm really happy that you did and if you are doing it on weekends at least you know now a little bit about triggers about environment that can potentially help you out when it comes to to not feeling like shit for four days afterwards mm, yeah yeah it's um it's interesting it's a process it's learning um i've never the the thing is i've never re i'm never really inclined to just go and do it myself um so i can't really talk about it from that aspect you know somebody who might be sitting at home and doesn't have a bad yeah. environment around them but there's other factors um as in stress with work uh, maybe the out of work maybe the relationships with their girlfriend shitty or their parents is shitty so um i'm quite lucky i still live at home but i'm planning on moving out in a few months um, the relationship with, um, well, my girlfriend lives here as well, so the relationship's quite good. Um, but now I realise that I want to move out, and sort of there's a consequence of me not room, uh, moving out, um, and there's a reward of me moving out. So um, I think you can look at the sort of um, drugs and alcohol thing in the same way. What's the consequences and rewards, and if um, just sort of uh, figure out you know what that is and try and balance that out as well. But, yeah. Yeah. For sure. You touched on there about moving out. And I think that that's a good point is having that independence to move out. And that kind of adds to your responsibility as well, both mm -hmm. obviously yeah. financially and that can help you yeah, make exactly. be better decisions too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's another thing. So, um, I don't pay much to be honest. I give like for the, so I lost my job. Uh, the contract ended with my previous job in uh, mid December then I forgot to update the mobile number on my CV, right? So um, I was sending jobs out, uh, CVs out to jobs, um, and they weren't getting re returned. I was like, right, what the hell is going on here? Am I this unemployable? <laughs> <laughs> so shit, my mom's actually let us stay here without paying anything for the past three months. Um, obviously, I'm working now, so that's always good. But um, when I move out, it's that responsibility of like, right, fucking hell, I need to make rent. Then I've got to pay for food, you know, all of these other things. So... It's more responsibility, but um, 
I never, I've, I've never really got it. Like when Jordan Peterson started talking about it, I was like, is it responsibility really that people want? But um, and now I understand it more. You know what I mean? Like for me, it's progression. So you could, you can kind of make the similarities, but progression, um, mentally, physically, and then obviously progress is getting independence and moving out. Um, so I'm trying to look at my life in that way, sort of where am I progressing, where am I lacking. And um, then moving forward from there. So, yeah, nice. I think a big part of it is general self awareness as well, and that's the mm. great thing about responsibility. And I think someone said this on a podcast once uh, about self inquiry. It's a really good analogy. Um, essentially, doing self inquiry is like lifting up the blinds in the dirty bedroom. Um, it doesn't yeah. in- inherently make the room any cleaner, but it helps you see what you're tripping over with more clarity. Because you know mm. you can hide from from the the things that are going on in your life, and you can choose to not move forward, but guess what? You're still going to trip over those things. And I think Jordan Peterson says a really good um, quote about this as well, that the one of the poster you shared regarding the, the village and the dragon. Is that right? Yeah. Um, You've got it up the, there, have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Slay the dragon. Slay the dragon in his lair before he comes to your village. That's, that's it. it and that's a great yeah. analogy, I think, for, for responsibility. Is things will always creep up to come and get you. Um, mm. And you know, you don't want to be in the same position you were last year. And this is one thing that I kind of focus on. It's like, right, this year or this time next year, I want to look back on myself with embarrassment. And that's mm. that's quite a cool way to look at it, I think, because you yeah. can say, right, May 2021, I want to say, damn, like the guy I was back in 2020, he wasn't the same. And that's amazing mm-hmm. because I've made all of this progress and I've taken action on, on the things that I needed to work on. And like you said, it's those specific weaknesses that you feel maybe sabotage you or let you down um Mm. you can look back on each year and i know that you're big for kind of reviewing goals as well in what you do so um one of the best posts that i've seen you post on instagram was sharing your your goals that you had for for 2020 uh, and reviewing them too so um what made you want to kind of do that and, and what's the importance of writing it down do you think um so I don't know the science, the psychology behind it. But <laughs> me, when I write a goal down, it's in the subconscious. So I use this. So there's a thing I want to create. Like I said before, I'm going to blast my own horn and give you everybody these grand plans. But it's essentially, the, well, I'm going to call it the comprehensive goal system. And for me, at the minute, that is basically um, two whiteboards and a diary. So the diary is for the daily tasks. The whiteboard has um, a to-do list on. Um, it has important dates on and just um, sort of money aspect. Um, and then the third one is like goals that can be completed within the year. Um, so I have like sort of daily, monthly, and then yearly, which is obviously the 2020 ones. But I feel as though if you write them down, you work towards them subconsciously um, every day. You can attack. Obviously, I can go back and look at the list. But last year, I didn't do that at all. And I completed most of um, what I wanted to achieve. Um <clears throat> So I think that, obviously, like I said, I don't know the psychology behind it, but it works for me. If you write it down, it's more, it's there in your head. Um, yeah, it's sort of like sticks. I think there's, so some people would um, argue that hi- just highlighting in books doesn't work, you know, to retain information. If you're actually writing it down, I know John Peterson says that, read a passage or chapter, go take notes on it, make sure you understand it, then move forward. So it's kind of like the same idea. Um Writing it down also helps keep track of things. Um, and I just think it's an easier way to manage your workload. You don't have, like, one thing I'm trying to do is make less decisions a day. So if I can write everything down at the start of the year, I don't have to think about everything. I can refer to something. Um, so Vizzy Andre, you know Vizzy Andre on Instagram? Yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah. But he has, um, in an abundant world, I don't know exactly what it is. In an abundant world, like, with so information, um, so much information the point of it would be um to sort of um reduce a sort of filter out information instead of adding things um so it's kind of just like that i'm trying to filter everything um and writing things down helps do that um so i work towards things um daily the daily tasks then fit into the monthly tasks and then the monthly tasks fit into the bigger picture of a yearly goal um, so that's the way I sort of structure it. It works for me. Um, and I'm trying to, th- I think I'm going to release something which would probably be a sort of planner or diary of some um, some sort. That'll probably happen next year. But because um, 
I feel like if it works for me, if it can help someone else, then it's worth doing. You know what I mean? So Definitely. that's generally the process I do. What, what about you? Do you do something yeah, similar? Yeah, I love that, man. I'm very similar in a sense. I kind of write things down. And actually from looking at your post at the end of last year, I caught, sort of reviewed the goals that I had for 2019 and wrote down my goals for 2020 as well. So mm. I had personal goals, relationship goals, um, yeah. general just um, financial goals as well. And I think there was another one which was, I think it was just like general learning and development um, goals as well. So there's like four different categories. And yeah. I basically like, and I think what is great about writing things down is it gives you clarity. And like you said, mm -hmm. there's so much noise out there. And as a person, you think like thousands of thoughts a day. I think it's tens of thousands of thoughts. So mm -hmm. being able to yeah. actually write down like a few things that matter to you is really good. And then that gives you kind of, your daily goals and your monthly goals. So I have a, like a to-do list as well. So I write down my weekly priorities on a board here. And then basically I split that up into daily. So like Friday's to-do list, I'll write down. Yeah. If mm. I've accomplished that, then boom, Saturday. And I look at my weekly priorities and those weekly priorities are based on what I want to achieve for the month and then like the year kind of thing. So um, yeah. everything's kind of linked together, but you're right, writing things down not only keeps you accountable, but yeah. it helps with, with your general direction and overall clarity, I think. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you must have to be quite disciplined because you have not you have like the thing is you have a business i don't have anything right now all i have is my experience i have the jordan peterson online store that i haven't focused on like i'm being quite not irresponsible but i'm not focusing on that so um for you though you have a business you have your personal life like you know what i mean you've got yeah. a lot of different things that i can um sort of look up and maybe uh, well anybody who listens to this and follows you on instagram can take note of because you have a lot of knowledge in what you do. And then obviously you have a lot of, you not only have um, your, you're not only responsible for you, but a lot of other people as well. Yeah, so. of course. And I think um, a good point to touch on here is, is systems as well. So for me, yeah. I've been running my business for about three and a half years now. And at the start, I was, I didn't know what I was doing. Folders were everywhere. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't take like my client list seriously. My finances mm. were not good. Like I wasn't tracking things properly. And yeah. now I and I guess this is a great thing about general entrepreneurship and having a business or a project it forces mm. you to be accountable right like I yeah. have to like do my accounts I have to yeah. do my tax I have to manage cash flow and that kind of thing so it's really good in, in helping you learn things but when you get to a point and and this is the thing as you get busier and busier and you take on more things your systems are the things that are going to keep you successful each day and they're the things that are gonna ensure that you can grow well and not forget and mm. just be more efficient in what you do and yeah. if you find that with your personal life as well there's lots of things that you feel you need to do and a lot of people you need to to keep happy build a good system on how you do things and that will basically run yourself or, or your business on autopilot like now I just yeah. know like, right, when a client comes in, I know how I'm onboarding them straight away, right? That like, I'm, I'm actually starting to automate the process as well for certain things. And, and man, like that kind of helps so much when it comes to yeah. your time and, and, and mental capacity, because you only have a certain amount of willpower during the day. And, you know, if you use yeah. that up by small decisions, you're not going to be able to, to get out of the place that you are because you can't look bigger picture. Yeah. I mean, how strict are you with your time? So I did try... So one, of the, like, I'll be truthful about my relationship as well. I we went through a rough patch a few months ago because I'm quite work focused. So I work from home at the minute, two laptops, um, nine fifteen till about five fifteen. Sometimes it goes over, and then I want to do, like, the job will provide money and it's immediate money. But in the long term, it's the other shit online that I want to do. Jordan Peterson project onwards, podcasts, um. So like, it suffered a little bit in my relationship, um because I was neglecting it a little bit in regards to time. Um, so I try to sort of um, like use block times, you know, so obviously I would be working, then I would set time for work, but I find it hard to switch off. So I was wondering, like, how strict are you with your time? You yeah, that's I mean? a really good question. So I used to be really bad. So I used to yeah. sit in my laptop all day and work, and I just thought work, work, mm -hmm. work. Now yeah. I'm a lot more let's say efficient and again i think it's building a system for, for my work schedule too that i kind of wake up i know what i need to attack for the day i kind of work 
you know, for a morning block, have a bit of a rest, do an afternoon kind of shallow bit of work. And I, I generally just try and finish by about five, six o'clock, just for the yeah. fact that I usually do a bit on the weekend too. But I literally have from basically dinner after I've eaten until like the evening to, to relax. And that actually like helps me reflect. It helps me spend time with my, my family as well and, and friends because that's really important to me is, is relationships. And I felt mm. that I neglected that personally when I was um, just working on my business. So I'm yes. actually quite, you know, I'm pretty good, I feel now. And obviously there are still days that you have to put in a little bit more than usual and you are you know, covered with work. But you need to remember that, you know, sitting there and not doing anything is not productive, man. You know, you could be sat on yeah. your laptop for like 12 hours, but you might even uh, work for six, man. You're, yeah, be yeah, you're yeah, better yeah. off getting three or four of those hours chilling and spending time True. getting a different perspective. And I think that this is a di another good point to touch on is, is the importance of having a new environment and, and general travel because yeah, we spoke yeah. about this as well and this is mm. where i actually find that i level up most when i have a new experience not where mm -hmm. i'm sat behind a laptop or sat behind a computer and it's really interesting right. it's like when you move and shift your paradigm to another thing it actually solves a problem indirectly because you look at something different for instance you could meet somebody traveling or, or meet someone and you get like a story from them or an experience that then says ah oh, i can now go back to this and attack this in a different way um, and mm -hmm. sometimes sitting in, in your room and, and just trying to get output, yeah. output, output doesn't actually get you yeah. anywhere. It can actually be really destructive. Yeah, 100%. Um, it's interesting that, like we spoke about it on Instagram, then we're basically, and so the general idea of what we said was that the more, exp like, it's like, um, it's just being open-minded when you go sit somewhere and you chat with someone, or if you start the conversation or they chat with you, like, there's always something you can take from a conversation and i don't know if i'm misquoting you but i think jordan peterson said it as in like um I, I don't know what he said but it was sort of like listen listen to someone as if you've got like they they know something you don't or something like that i feel like that's an important thing um to spark up conversation like so my girlfriend lived in manchester i used to uh, well it was like berry area down that way um and there was sick lounge reconto lounge it was called like this sick glass pub and i would go and sit in there and i would work and like you say you feel refreshed because you're having new conversations with different people and obviously as you look around the realization i had was that nobody knows in reality really like what what the hell's going on you know what I mean? yeah yeah <laughs> like everyone's trying to figure something out so um it's not as though people have the same viewpoints you can always learn from different people um and switching up the environment is massive traveling's big i haven't done too much myself but even just getting out of your own city um is big um just for personal development and personal growth because you realize just how big the world is how little you know also so it's an interesting point really like it's one um i want to travel more to be honest i think i think everyone should travel more it's something everybody should do so for sure. And I think with travel as well, it gets kind of that stigma, doesn't it? That people say, oh, you're just this hippie that goes around and you don't <laughs> want to work. And, you know, it's kind of, that's again, kind of a narrow minded view of things because I feel that, you know, I came back from traveling when I was 19, when after mm -hmm. I spent a year in Australia and I actually came back to uni and I was way more confident than most of the people at uni for, from the fact yeah. I did travel. I was straight mm -hmm. away into the click with people. I could network really well. Social events, I was great. I was fun. I was I was quite charismatic. And I don't feel I would have got those skills if it wasn't for the fact that I'd been away and traveled. Um, mm. And I kind of had this sense of confidence to, to then even set up a business whilst at uni. And seriously, man, I don't think I would have got that if it wasn't for travel. So whilst people say that it's for losers and people that, that, that are lazy, I, I, I disagree with that point. I think you can get a lot from it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Where, where about did you travel? And... So I did Southeast Asia, New Zealand, Australia, which was sick. So right. I did what Southeast Asia. What time? Um, so it was 13 months. Wow. That's yeah a long, so good. i worked in australia for a bit man and i was like 19 fresh out of like <laughs> a levels man and i i didn't yeah. want to go to uni funnily enough i actually got a place at newcastle uni so i got oh. a place up there and then i said to myself i'm not ready to to go to uni yet i was unsure in newcastle as well because it was so far from where i lived 
Mm, so I said to true. myself, right, I'm going to travel. Two of my best mates wanted to do it as well. So it was a pretty cool thing to do. And yeah, man, like the, just the people I met, like I did some mad parties, did some mad <laughs> shit, like did like three nights a week out drinking. But it was more like the people that you meet and like the experiences you have, how people react in situations, how you mm. react in situations as well. So I used to find that I used to be very reactive in, in situations um, that, that were like very emotional and stuff. So where it came to like, girls relationships all that kind of stuff i was very reactive and that was right. something that i found from from just being out and, and experiencing things so you learn yeah. from this and you come back and it's weird you come back and everything else has stayed the same like all your mates yeah. at home of like are still the same they're talking about the same stuff doing the same thing and it's nice to have that familiarity but then yeah. also you've been on this journey which has been like shit man i've just done all this stuff and everything's the same like am i living in like a, a simulation like what's going on it broadens your horizons, doesn't it? That's, that's um, it. I think that's one of the messages that um, was sort of um, motivational for me when I, so obviously, like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to join the Marines. And one of the messages from um, like that aspect of my life was you go away, you travel, you come back, and then um, you realize that everyone's in the same position and the same job. I mean, I, I think it's hard to get a job, uh, sort of pay the like a career in the military anyway but you have all this travel experience um and not only that you're going through you're doing some hard shit you know what i mean and sometimes obviously i know that the marines and obviously the army and stuff are always um out doing other things for other people um so it's kind of like the same thing you know put yourself out there even if you're in regards to work and stuff as well if it's not paid um just sort of make the connections the networks um build your skills for I saw something the other day um, on Twitter by Visualize Value, which is another absolutely amazing uh, Instagram account, unbelievable. Um, and it was like, so it, so it's kind of like what I've did um, subconsciously without even knowing, but for Jordan Peterson. So a lot of people would um, be, I know he's just set out a new job um, on his Instagram, like for marketing or something. Um, so he's trying to fill that position and people will be applying for that. But um, what I've did, like not knowingly, by the way, I'm not that smart, but I've created an, a job for him without getting him involved. So I'm doing a lot of his content creation. Um, a lot of other people are doing content creation as well. But um, providing value. So um, in this day and age, I think that obviously you can set up on social media, anyone out there, by the way. And um, traveling's good, but you can do a lot of networking through social media as well. Um, obviously, like we've done now, I'd, you followed the page, I followed you because um, you've got some pretty good insights. I like the way you think, by the way. You know, some of the some of the um, normal things I would think about fitness, you sort of question them and it makes me think in a different way. So I appreciate that. But um, the point basically on Twitter was that you should create your own sort of job um, if you want to help someone who has more influence, um, sort of do things do something for them but don't ask them um try and i know um a lot of people do it they create content so um on social media about uh you know like uh, james clear i'll have a lot of stuff um think grow prosper you know that account yeah, as well I follow those. they'll create content on, based on original um original ideas by bigger authors and then obviously increase exposure and build a network that way so we can do both things um in the physical world and on social media um, and I think it's important, but um, yeah, it's one of those things. Sorry, taking a drink. Um, it's one of those things. It's an important aspect, like you said. Um, you can sort of build an online life, build a physical life just by traveling. Um, and realize that, like, when you come back to, when you look around you, when you, because I feel as though I've built like a virtual life. And when I come out of that life, I'm looking around as, and um, I realized that not a lot of other people are working on something online. No. But somebody who's traveled more than me might come back and think, oh, he's just a normal guy, but we're just working on different things. But I think they have similarities. Um, it can be done. Building networks online and obviously building networks in person, it's important. Um, but the the main point is really just get experience, isn't it? Get a, get a little bit of actual like knowledge about the world, become good at something. Um, and use other people's failures as pointers. You know what I mean? That's another thing you learn when you travel. Um you look at sort of how things work, different cultures work, and um, you can take value and information and point us from everything. So it's an interesting topic, really. Yeah, hundred percent. And I always have a a good kind of way way of like just managing not just traveling, but also 
you know not worrying what other people are doing if that makes sense so yeah. you can still have your friends from home and you can still do the things that you want to do with them you can still go out and have drinks you can still go out and have beers but you mm. can also jump on a podcast with somebody and talk about something completely different and be completely detached from yeah. the person that you are when you're with them and that does not make you two-faced that does not make you fake what actually that gives you is depth and that actually gives you yeah. lots of different you know multitudes to your personality and you can be yeah, whoever yeah. you want like i can jump off this podcast right now and i could go party for two days and i could be that guy <laughs> right i could yeah, also yeah. probably go to a meditation retreat after this and probably <laughs> chill out for a little bit i don't know how good i'd be i'd probably fucking lose my mind because i've got impatience but you kind of catch, catch my drift in the sense that you know yeah, you, yeah. you can edit yourself frequent frequently and ruthlessly and you don't have to be the person you were 15 minutes ago and it's nice to have that broad way of 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 being because it makes you more interesting man it makes you principled mm. it makes you fun like the guys that i know that i really get on with are just like they're like hard workers but they're also like party animals and they're all also like funny as fuck but they, they can also be serious and i'm like how do i yeah. even like stereotype this guy like you can't like that makes you more yeah. interesting i think yeah you kind of you kind of judge anyone everyone's on their own journey and it's it's a choice isn't it really to to focus on what you want to focus on yeah like you said you can jump off and just go do cocaine for two days. <laughs> days I don't know about that, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but anyone can I know what you mean. What you, want, you can do what you want, yeah. It's sort of like, um, it's just like trying to align, basically. I'm trying to align. Like, I'm trying not to put up a front on social media on the podcast now. Um, I enjoy these conversations that were, like me and you have and that I had with uh, Yannick on the previous podcast. And I have lots of DMs on Jordan Peterson. Even on my personal one, people come to us and they'll ask us like, I'm 36 years old. I haven't figured out what I want to do. And I just feel as like, am I even like, uh, what's the word sort of, am I the suitable person to answer such a question? So I'm trying to like align the way I come off online with the way um, in real life, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm trying not to have too much of a mismatch like come on here I talk about personal development and then go and fucking eat shitty food do drugs alcohol and everything but um, it makes sense it's it's one of those things uh, everyone's on their own journey and I'm not judging anyone who's living their own life differently because it's a choice for me to have this conversation it's a choice for you to ask uh, me to have this conversation but I just find small talk and Kim Kardashian and fucking influencer talk just bullshit I don't yeah. want to chat about all that shit I just, I don't know. I don't want to put my time into learning about it and then talking about it and not having any payoff for me personally. So For sure. No, I agree with that. I hate all that kind of shit. And small talk's definitely the worst. And I think that just comes from generally being too nice, right? Like you're too nice oh, to talk really. about what you want to talk about. So you mm. decide to lose yourself in trivial pursuits. I don't think that that's ever no. useful. Um, and I think you touched on a good point there is what I like about you and the reason why people are sending you DMs and asking you these questions is because you are so authentic and open and there are so yeah. many people out there that are basically very shallow and they are putting up a front and a facade and what i've learned is people can see through your bullshit man like people yeah. can see through people that are fake man you can just you have this intuition right if you've got half, half mm. if you've got half about you you can see and i think well, you posted something about um oh i don't know whether i should keep pushing out these ideas and i commented on your yeah. photo didn't i and i said man keep pushing out these ideas like you don't need yeah. to be a guru like it's better that you're not a guru because yeah. like we trust what you say that makes you authentic and like the fact that you're able to show yourself as vulnerable like you know talking about this stuff very transparently mm. is fantastic in my opinion not many people can do yeah. that mate i think it's really yeah. really really noble and honest yeah cheers it's made a smile i mean it's kind of it's just uh, like you said, I wasn't sure whether I keep doing it. Um, but I, obviously, I'm going to keep doing it. But I just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to just. Um, I always talk from experience. Um, I try. I, I tried. I remember I wrote an article once about some bullshit that um, I basically echoed, and I was writing it, and I read it back, and I was like, I felt weird because I didn't believe it. First of all, I was doing it. I was writing it because. It was the popular thing to write about, and I don't want to do that. Like I don't want to. I don't want to come across as the most. I'm not the most successful person. I fall short, um, in materialistic ways, um, in comparison to friends and other people. But I feel as though um, I have a, like some experience in life. Well, we're all on different levels, but 
for the way that I'm going anyway, I have more experience and it's more relevant to me. And I feel as though mentally um, I have more experience and what's relevant to me. So it kind of balances out material stuff on too important to me. But I try to um, just reinforce the point that I'm not complete. It's a continuous process. I fall short. Because a lot of the times you look at Tony Robbins, you're like, fucking hell, he's living successful every day. He does no wrong. But then you have to remember he has a team of, like, what, say, 100 people managing his life. Um, and not many people, or not any not any people I know have that at all. Um, so I'm just trying to, I'm trying to, I hope it does come across as authentic and that I'm not trying to be something. Because I'll talk about... Um, the shitty parts of my life in hope that um, people can relate to it and resonate and um, reach have through DM. So I'm just trying to, I have to balance it on the Jordan Peterson archive. It's easy to read a quote and then, um, like I said, echo the idea and not put personal experience behind it, but I've tried to change that over the past six months and hopefully it comes across as um, like a sort of valuable. So, yeah, definitely, man. Well, I'm loving the posts anyway, um, which is awesome. And I think another thing I wanted to touch on was kind of relationship as well. So um, yeah. obviously you said that you have a relationship now. How long have you been with your missus? Uh, it's 11 months. It'll 11 be, months. Yeah. It'll be 12 months next. Nearly, nearly month, your anniversary, yeah. man. Nearly anniversary. Yeah. So um, kind of you said that you had some like rough patches and every relationship goes through conflict. And I think um, especially mm-hmm. for guys you know, the way that you act in a relationship can determine the success of your relationship, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, the way in which you're perceived, you're treated. So for you, like, how do you generally find managing the relationship? Are there anything that you, anything that you do or any rules that you have for for your relationship? Um, So, um, I had a, a little bit of insecurity, to be honest. It had been a while since I had been in a relationship. Okay. It had been around 2013, 2014. Um, girlfriend who I had in school, throughout school, on and off for four years. Um, and I still keep in contact with her, to be honest. So that was a point of, um, that was a sticking point in the relationship. Um, because I did tell her about that. Right now, I'm not chatting to um, the previous girlfriend, even though I had been, you know, apart for a long time. But um, that was something new for me. So I, I had, like, I never, I've never really been bothered about women. I'm not really someone who goes out and fucking tries to, you know, pull and, you know, on, on the nights out, I'd rather have fun. So it had been a while since I had a relationship. Um, and then when I got this relationship, it's like, it's not even like you have to, you have to relearn how to be, but you also learn um, about the new person so it the dynamic changes again um so in regards to rules i mean this the rough patch was basically i was a bit insecure and um, because it had been a while um i don't i don't think that um the insecurity was totally unfounded but um there's a point where you get diminishing returns from thinking um and overthinking and being anxious so um yeah i've done my best to put any concerns behind me um during that time though i was acting a bit irresponsible and not how you should act in a relationship Um, nothing physical just through social media so um luckily my girlfriend's mature enough to see past the fact forgive me so and that was the sticking point um from my perspective um outwards and then from his perspective onto me we had both or i had done wrong um so um, that was the sticking point, really. Just strange, you know. People are complicated, and to make it, things even more complicated, she is Ukrainian. She has a lovely accent, so <laughs> she speaks Russian and everything. Oh, nice. So it's kind of like um, the culture is different, and then you have to take into account how she was brought up and all of this relationship with parents and stuff. So people are complicated. That's one thing I would just bring up, obviously. Um, like I said, I had neglected time um, through work and stuff. I like to just crack on and get things done. So now I, I'm trying to dedicate more time to it, but I'm also trying to be as responsible as I can because I want to move out. So I have to put more effort in with work, um, sometimes doing a little bit over time and stuff, even if it's an hour. So you, you mentioned that you read The Way of the Superior Man. Well, he has some controversial ideas. He does, yeah. So... um. 
what he says essentially is that the man has the man has a rule, the woman has a rule, the man should be providing, um, and a lot of other things. So the woman will test you when you're working. Basically, your, your partner will test you. Um, she'll see. So really, what it is, it's a she wants attention from you while you're working, right? But what it really is is some subconscious effort to see how you give in to temptation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is so, it's mind blowing, but it makes sense, doesn't it? It does. Like, it's like a te- everything's a test, isn't it? That's kind of what is, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mini tests. So you have that to deal with. Um, obviously, that book, I would recommend anyone reads that if you're watching or listening. Yeah, it's a great book. Yeah, great The book. Way of the Superior Man. Is it David Dieter? Da- like David Dieter, yeah. Oh, yeah, Dieter, yeah. Um. So in regards to that, it's just kind of like a balancing act, like I said again, timing, um, rules, um, a little bit more privacy. Um, I'm more conscientious. I have things on the side to work on. At the minute, she has a job in a bar and works at uni. Um, it's sort of, it sort of just again comes down to time for me. Um, figuring out and having a little bit more privacy as well. Um, like I said, I live at home with uh, with my mum and her. Um, obviously that'll change. Things will get easier, but um, relationships are. It's like a, a there's a thing about business. So um, when a business is grown and it has like a hundred people in it, it becomes a living thing. I feel as though relationships are the same thing. Like um. It's actually the living thing. It'll decline or incline based on the input and outputs. So they're complicated. I'm not an expert. Rules that I have, are essentially for me, are just to try and be more responsible in the relationship, um, not be as selfish, and try to. Uh, you have to. You have another person to consider with your decisions. Put it that way. Yeah. For sure, man. That's some really good insight into that. And I definitely recommend reading the book um, by David yeah. Dieda just for the fact that it's not just principles on, on relationships, but also like principles on like masculinity, I think, run through yeah, in that 100%. book. Um, yeah. And especially the first, I think the first few chapters are, are gold, man. Seriously, like mm-hmm. they're ones to reread over again because they're yeah. they're amazing. At second like second half of the book, it gets a bit too like woo-woo, like fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. spiritual shit. Doesn't it? Like I turn off yeah. a bit, it's like, the woman is like the sea and like ah oh, some mm. of that stuff really doesn't doesn't resonate with me but i don't know it might yeah. resonate with you but i would percent have that and i think like you said as well with relationships they're complicated and you should also like read up a lot about them as well so like, i find that like my relationships are much better when i read up about certain things and i've actually delved into like speaking to people on this podcast that do pick up on like dating coaches and you know it's not from the right. sense that i want to go out and be like this massive playboy it's the idea that you want to learn about the opposite sex you want to learn about attraction you want yeah. to learn about you know what their behaviors are, are, are typically trying to cause you to to be or, or what their drivers behind their own behaviors and and just get yeah. more insight really again it's just about cutting your learning curve so you, so you don't fuck up as much because like you said you are going to fuck up in relationships you've made some mistakes everyone's going to do it we're all human but it's about just trying to find the right ways in, in which we can manage those things yeah it's like two people coming together it's like yeah you, ha- you have to first of all make sure you're aligned in your mission isn't it really because that's what it is it's like yeah like a business has a mission, a relationship has a, a, um, a mission and you have to make sure you're aligned. Um, they're tough, not going to lie. Even if you look at relationships, not in a loving way, well, in a loving way, but um, sort of parental and stuff or with siblings, it's the same. Um, so I was a third child. I had two. I kind of came in a, in a shitty uh, timeline. <laughs> so my mom wanted a girl. So she had a son, then she had another son, then I was the third son. So first of all, I'm not only the third son, um, but I'm the third child out of four. So I'm lost in the middle somewhere between like them three other kids and the mortgage. Um, so obviously she's got all that to deal with, but she did after me, which is my sister, obviously. And um, it's like, I feel like um, that's affected me as well in relationships in, in regards to parents and how to learn and manage with certain things and become a little bit more independent um but it's it's one of those things that you have to merge learn from you can learn from any relationship working relationships and stuff um like you said people have when you spoke to the the coaches pickup artists or whatever you have like um people have intentions and social dynamics is a big part of it um something i'm learning about 
um, and everyone's learning about it and you can always learn about it, but um, it's it's one of those things. Some actions have intentions behind them, others don't. People like to have, uh, try to get a rise out of you, you know, certain um, uh, reactions. So I guess reading about it's good, but experiencing it is probably a more important part as well. Obviously, you can go read about how to pick up a girl, but if you stand at the bar yourself and yeah. you look, it's like you need to get out there and do it, you know what I mean? 100%, yeah. And I'm always a big advocate of, you know, for whatever hours you put in reading, you should spend three hours going out and actually applying. You know, that applies uh, yeah. to the gym, that applies to, you know, st- you know, reading a book that you want to learn, like, you know what I mean? When you study, like, you can't just read a textbook. You should spend three hours actually studying and re- mm-hmm. writing about it to make it a yeah. thing that you learn. Um, and all of my, like, biggest, you know, shifts in life have come from experiences, man. They've come from not reading books. Maybe I've known a little bit about the books, but the reality of my actions and, and me doing the thing has basically given me the, the, the lesson in itself, if that makes sense. Yeah, because it doesn't really have an idea doesn't have value to you unless you experience it because then like i mentioned earlier you have the rewards associated with it and the consequences yeah. um and that's the important part because like anything in life well there's two parts to this so um a lot of people will set goals right to run towards some people are fine they'll chase that that motivates them some people are more motivated by the um the dog you know, if there's a dog chasing you, it might bite your ass. It's like, what would you rather do? Avoid the pain or um, experience the pleasure? I think that um, they're both important and um, the reward and the consequence. But um, and a lot of people don't like to set up the consequences um, or the rewards, you know, when they're sort of um, going out and um, trying something new because they don't want to set up the parameters for failure. They only set up the parameters for success. So the experience is um, 100% more um, valuable than just the theory. Um, and I think a lot of people, well, I've read that and I've experienced that. So I know it's true. Yeah, definitely. I think as well, we always refrain from direct consequences. And that's kind of mm. the same about, and this is the whole internet era, isn't it? It's the fact that like, right, I can, if I get blown off on up, a uh, blown off on Tinder is a lot different to, get, <laughs> to getting blown off at yeah. the bar, man. Like that, that feeling yeah. at the bar when you get yeah, blown yeah. off by a bird really hurts, man like it really hurts but tinder is like haha you laugh about it and you let it go and that's the thing man like we we lose ourselves in like this new world where things are a lot easier and and piers morgan talks about it and as controversial as he is i kind of agree it's kind of like the snowflake generation we we've not gone through the rites of passage that we need to sometimes and i do Mm. think that maybe this is the reason why there are a lot of mental health issues there's a lot of angst because we're not actually doing things the way they should be like we're not going through correct action we're sitting and we're waiting and we're anxious and we're not sure and and we're waiting and, and, and like we're, we're just pre-anticipating this this thing to do and that in itself is going to mm. cause you mentally to go bad whereas you know short term it's a bit shit when you go out and get direct consequences but then you dust yourself off and you realize actually i've not made a class and i'm going to be all right and you crack onto the next one and when you build that habit you kind of realize that you've got a bit of character about you and, and you're not all soft yeah there's a great thing i heard from elliot Holtz years ago and i never forgot it it's in my notes it's um do the thing to have the power and it's such Love a that. like it's such a good little par- um sentence it's like like you mentioned there obviously coming on a podcast for me is it's a new thing i could have worried about it for the past night but i didn't uh the only time i ever felt a tiny bit nervous was about five minutes before but I, i've learned to do that now which is because it becomes paralyzing, you know, that, yeah, um, yeah. when you're overthinking. Um, because you're thinking about what could go wrong, but in, generally people are inclined to think about what can go wrong instead of what could go right. So um, anxiety and overthinking is generally filled with what ifs. But if you replace the what ifs um, with, with the negative consequences, you can obviously replace them with the what ifs of um, more successful and more positive consequences, as in, so, for example, I could be, what if I forget what I'm going to say? What if I stutter? Because I've been doing a lot of that lately. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what I mean? But it could be like, what if we have a really good conversation? What if I get invited on to another one just because this one went so well? And not even that. It's just like, obviously, we've got a better relationship now. So it's um, it's interesting. It's uh, it's one of those things. Just do the thing. Um, you'll realize it's not as horrible as it is. And if it is, you'll learn better ways to go about it next time so 
um doing it like we mentioned the experience is a lot better um but i love that do the thing to have the power it's a nice little thing i live by now i like that definitely and i think i had a guy come on the episode chris tabish he was like a stand-up comedian that does a lot about basically like business like laughing in business and, and like making business interactions more humorous and he basically mm. has a really good quote about that that what you spoke about then about coming onto the podcast and worried about messing up he basically says that like you should just go on and if you mess up you laugh you kind of like like nothing can phase you if that makes sense so like yeah. you could come yeah. on here and you could be super nervous but you say to yourself before anything that happens even if like the fucking computer collapses and crashes down you you just laugh because at the end of yeah. the day it's not really that bad like you can probably get through it and i did mm. a public speaking event at a um where was it it was a business in bristol recently um before coronavirus and the the powerpoint just shut down halfway through i was doing this talk uh -huh. in front of people and i was actually getting paid to do the talk as well and it was just a technical malfunction like i couldn't really do much about it so i just yeah. go i just turned around and went haha well the projector's off gonna have to just roll with it now and like people just laughed yeah. and i just just went through and like mm. it was one of those things that could have phased me and it probably would have in the past but having yeah. kind of that mindset of just i'm just gonna do it it's just gonna give me the power fuck it you're gonna be all right yeah. and like that fuck it mentality man seriously it helps you out a lot when it comes to yeah, things yeah. like that yeah 100 percent. and obviously the more so the chances of something going wrong the first time you do it is quite high so just getting over it in practice and obviously like you um so i don't have a script today so every time you do a podcast it could go wrong but um, obviously you have a presentation. I'd imagine you just have bullet points and you chat about yeah, it. Your, that's it yeah. your, your experience over the years of doing it, putting it into practice, you could probably do it without a, a PowerPoint anyway. So even thing, even though things can go wrong, doing them will give you the confidence to um, chat about something without any pointers, without any bullet points. Um, so it's just like a, the experience, again, the process of doing it. Um, and that's what I enjoy. It's constant problem solving. Like, I ch like right now, I don't plan about anything. We didn't plan anything to chat about. It's constant problem solving, connecting ideas, like neurons firing as fast as they can. Probably the fastest they will today. I'm going to go chill and have a barbecue after this. <laughs> nice. But it's like, um, it's just that. It's problem solving. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's something that, like, public speaking is one thing that I have for 2020 to improve. And so I'm facing it now. I'm doing it. Um, and this is the only way to go about it, to be honest. So. Yeah, nice, man. Well, I think we've touched on a load of great points today. I've really enjoyed it. We've gone for how long now? About an hour and, tw yeah, and a half, no, no, man. No. That's wicked. So um, yeah. just lastly, before I get you to plug where people can find you, what are your yeah. kind of the one rule from Jordan Peterson that you've learned that you <laughs> think everybody should, should know about and everybody should live by um, from your own perspective? Um, can you give us two seconds while I grab the book? Yeah, sure, man. No worries. C crack on. Okay. <laughs> uh, right. So, see, I did. I did make a note of these for the last power, uh, PowerPoint. You got me PowerPoint. And PowerPoint now, loves uh, it. Podcast. So, give us a second. I'm going to take a look. Um, there's a few. So, I'll, I'll touch on a few. So, basically, number one, stand up straight with your shoulders back. This is essentially posture and how you carry yourself. Like I mentioned earlier on the podcast, um, the way so my physical improvement has helped how um, I can communicate and how people take me, and that's a big point in what I wanted to improve. So that's a big one. Um, obviously, you can have the mental aspect, but just sort of the physical aspect is good. Um, then I would say compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. Always just compare yourself because like we mentioned on social media, it's constant successes and external um, validation that people are seeking. It's like a, it's called a feed, like the Instagram feed, you're literally feeding your brain. So um, you just need to sort of ignore that sort of stuff um, and just compare yourself to who you were, obviously, because you're the only one that matters in your life. Um and it's not a rule, but clean your room is one of the bigger ones that I love. Like, I, I fucking love cleaning now. Like, yeah. dishes, anything, a little bit spare time, put in some headphones and listen to a podcast. But um, I think the room, your room and your house in whole is an extension of you as a person. So um, I, I cleaned the room before I came on the podcast. Nice. I? 
I'm big. I'm big about. I, I'd probably say those three are, are probably my favorite. One, the clean in my room one's massive. Like I'm pretty. Just like I think it just shows like other people like this is who I am. Like you said, it's an extension of yourself. And also, mm-hmm. like if you can't clean your room right, how are you gonna run a business that turns over six figures or something like that? Yeah, right? Like yeah, the, yeah, the, the way you do the small things is actually how you embody the rest of the stuff you do. Um, yeah. You Interesting know. point, to be honest, because. Um, a lot of people think that success and failures, well, failures, generally, you can have a catastro- catastrophic failure. But like we mentioned, failures or obesity or addiction can come in small doses, don't they, really? And that's the same with success. Um, you sort of you sort of have to um, really take note of the details because um, the, the small things that you do during the day take up 75% of your day. So um, they play a much bigger role um, to your success or failure in anything. Um so it's important to take note of them, yeah, like you said. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Hundred so. percent, man. Wicked. Well, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed today, man. Like, seriously, mm-hmm. so glad to get you on. Lastly, yep. where can everybody find you? I know you've got a couple of projects going. You've got the Jordan Peterson. So yeah, plug away, uh, man. Um, Instagram Jordan Peterson Archive, Facebook Jordan Peterson Archive. Um, the only personal social media I use is Instagram, which is Louis Convery. Uh, will you link it in the notes? Yeah. Yeah, I'll link it in the notes yeah. for you, man. Um, so yeah and I have a new one which is Project Onwards um, not sure what direction to take that at the minute but it's probably going to have a lot of valuable things on that people can use um, so that's on Instagram Project Onwards Louis Convery and Jordan is an archive so yeah awesome well a big thank you for coming on today man and for the audience listening make sure you give this podcast a 5 star rating subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next one and um yeah hopefully louis man i have to come up to newcastle man we'll have to have a night out or whatever (laughs) yeah 100 percent definitely yeah wicked man we'll have to behave ourselves though (laughs) (laughs) we'll just take books out and stand at the door and read or something oh yeah man just drink water and that that we call it (laughs) yeah Yeah, fair enough um good plan good plan wicked top man